Hey guys, it's me with Becca. So I'm here today to do my November wrap up where I am word and finished seven books and to discuss a bit of my December TBR. So let's get started. So the first book I finished in November was The Name of the Wolves by Umberto Eco and this was tra translated from the Italian by William Weaver. And this takes place in 1327 in French in a wealthy Italian abbey are suspected of heresy. And Brother William of Baskerville arrives to investigate when his delicate mission is suddenly overshadowed by seven bizarre deaths. Brother William turns detective. His tools are the logic of Aristotle, the theology of Aquinas, and the empirical insights of Roger Bacon, all sharpened to a glistening edge by wary humor and virtuous curiosity. He collects evidence, deciphers secret symbols, coded manuscripts, sticks into the eerie labyrinth of the abbey where the most interesting things happen at night. So yeah, we follow that, we follow this mystery, and we don't get a story from the perspective of Brother William, but by his scribe, a student named Adso, who is telling us the story many years in the future after Brother William has passed, and when Adso, who at the time was a young man, is an older man. <laughs> and let me just pull up my notes because I am chaotic in this sense, and there's just a lot that's happening. But I did enjoy the discussions of theology and philosophy in this novel, how a person's beliefs can be used against them politically to serve those in legislative woes, and as well there was this like, kind of, I guess, censorship in this novel in a sense. If this abbey, like, the librarian had control over the books that were loaned out to those in a library, like you decide if those who requested books could have them. Like it wasn't a library where you can walk in and grab a book and go to a reading desk. You had to request it, and the librarian would go on to this like other level of the library to grab it. And he and his assistant were the only ones there, so I did find that interesting, as well as the way like people's beliefs motivated their actions and how different people, I guess, interpret bi biblical stories differently than one another and all of those, not arguments, but discussions, like with one person thinking they're right and not really listening properly and you know, it's like keeping knowledge from others for some reason and how some will go out of their way to protect and defend what they truly think. So yeah, I really much enjoyed it and I gave it a four star. Now the next book I finished in November was Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. And this is about this orc who she was a well, she was a boundary, I believe, but and she decided to hang up her sword and go into retirement. And she goes into this town and tries to open a coffee shop. The thing is, no one in this town has ever heard what coffee is. They keep referring to it as bean juice. And it's just her trying to figure out how to run a business properly. And she does have this sidekick and has to deal with not Murphy, but it's like you, these um, people who. She has to pay them in order to like keep them out of her neck, in order to keep business going and whatnot. And with this, I I don't know. I just didn't really connect to the characters. I did like seeing at the end when the when something happens to the coffee shop, how people come together to help live out. Like I did enjoy seeing the friendship. But I just never really felt like we knew the characters as well. Like things were happening quite quickly and yeah I don't know overall I didn't like this I did enjoy the 
I guess some not, not sandwiches, but descriptions of pastries and whatnot. I do have a sweet tooth, so and there's that. And as well, I do enjoy seeing how we learn the lesson that you make your own luck. You don't need a special tool or anything because she did have this like stone that was, I guess, rumored. I mean, he was told in his story to bring luck to those who have it and. We see how she does have, she does possess it, and someone does take it from her, and, and there's several times before they take it, and really we see how she learns it. She doesn't need it. She never really needed it. She made her own luck. So, oh no, overall I did enjoy it. I enjoyed the ending. I think it was, and I did give it a four star. So next was Immortal Warnings by Chloe Young. This takes place in this world where people have. The ability to body jump, like they are able to jump from one spe one body to another to another, and we need this control. And this takes place in this world, in this I guess kingdom, <laughs> where the uh, king he's not really a good king. He doesn't really seem to care for the people. Like there's a lot of problems, and he decides to have kind of in a way to have people not ignore, but take their minds off it and shift their minds somewhere else to host this torment every year where people essentially have to kill one another and whoever lives gets a bunch of money and this torment it's not like you know Hunger Games where it's like one stage it's like a torment that takes place all over the city people have these special wristbands that tells them when a, uh, a competitor is nearby and we follow these two individuals, one who is this princess who many years ago slaughtered, slaughtered her parents who were the king and queen of the separate kingdom that's now part of this kingdom and tried to kill the uncle and she's been in hiding ever since and her cousin wants her to kill the king so he can become king and, and we follow this other individual who once revenge or not once revenge but his he was part of the court until he and his childhood sweetheart tried to run away and destroy the kingdom and yeah it's like him trying to make enough money to keep the sweetheart I guess alive who's in a coma because she did try to body jump but it, this didn't end well so yeah, and so you try and team up together to really like take out the other competitors so they're the last two standing and along the way they fall in love. And I didn't enjoy this. I enjoyed seeing like the people in this kingdom, like they are treated so poorly that if they get hurt during um these this torment, like the palace will pay for their treatment and pay for the money they lose, so it's like they just don't really care in this world. Like, bodies are like, I guess, people put bodies up on black market because it's like, oh, you can body jump? Here's a body that you prefer. Like, people just, like, the body itself is not really, like, I guess, cared for would be the best way to explain. But, you know, overall, I did enjoy this first, this first novel and I gave it four. And the next novel I finished in November was. Ghost Island by Maxi, and this is his fourth book in the Jessica Naomi series or a Ghosts of the Past series. And I would say read the first book, which is The Witch Hunter. That's cause with that first book we go in more depth about Jessica's history and about her past, which does play a big role in this novel as well. Like read the books in order because uh the case from the previous novel does play a big part in this one. But with this one, Jessica's put on this leave of absence after an incident and she's on this island and someone's murdered and apparently there's been a series of murders in the past 40 years, all of, this, all of them linked to this legend uh, girl in a blue coat which is uh, this girl who is an orphan. And she was living in this orphanage and she had this habit of waiting on the docks 
every night until she disappeared and since then there's been a legend and yeah I did enjoy seeing how the case unraveled and how you were <laughs> like I do enjoy seeing how you you cannot trust any of the characters that Jessica means it's like they all they are all suspects you you have to be suspicious of their motivations for things and, and Jessica she has her own stuff going on like she she has this illness mental illness I'd say I don't think that's the right term but I don't know the right term but she kind of really she worries that she's losing the, the ability to this to separate life from her imagination like real life from her imagination and as well she is contemplating like when I'm away isolating herself from everyone and everything she knows and starting fresh and then yeah and it seems like we get some answers at the end of the book but not all of what Jessica decides to do next after some things uh, revealed to her about her mm, physical health I would say so yeah overall I did enjoy it and I gave it a the next book I finished in November is The London Sion Society by Sarah Penner. This takes place in, I want to say, yeah, 1873. And we follow this girl named, oh my word, can I remember anything? No, I can't. This girl named Lena. And she is, I guess, this assistant to this spiritualist named Rod Lane and Elena she wants Rod Lane she wants to really use Rod Lane's knowledge to help her solve the murder of her sister who was killed and robbed and the murderer was never caught and this happened in London the death and Rod Lane for some reason she left London and is living in Paris and she doesn't plan to go back to London anytime, anytime soon until she gets this letter that her old friend is dead and she is asked to perform a seance to figure out who killed him and he was part of this gentleman group called the London Seance Society and with his before his death there were rumors that they were for frauds in this organization and whatnot. And we learned pretty quickly who, I guess, the the leader of the fraud or the scam is, and we learned who killed him and whatnot. And I thought it would be a bigger mystery, like, there would be a couple full away characters and whatnot. Like, it would take uh, longer to unveil who was the head of the scam. And, yeah, I don't know. I didn't really enjoy that part, but I did enjoy seeing Lena and Vaudelaine's relationship develop, so yeah. I did give this a four star. And the next book I finished in November was The Book of Doors by Garth Brown. And this takes place in New York City, and we follow this girl named Cassie who works at a bookstore. And one day her favorite customer dies, and he leaves her this book of doors that allows her to visualize any place in a world or any time period and open a door and she'll be transported there and it turns out there are many books like this that can do different stuff like there's a book of luck that will give you luck and whatnot and it seems like people are after her for this book as well several books and she has to team up with this man named Drymond Fox who is on the one from this woman who wants access to his family's library because he has many of these special books and these books are extremely rare people will go out of their ways to do it and they're worth quite a lot of money because of how rare they are and there are a couple antagonists in here both one the books one because well he wants the power that they give him as well I think it's the same with the other person who enjoys the hunt. Now with this one, it doesn't really work for me all that well. I don't know if it's 
because this is an art copy I got at the used bookstore, so I don't really know like if there were changes made to before the final edition was released, but I just didn't really connect to the characters, I didn't really care for them. I was intrigued by the plot for the first half, but then the second half happened and I felt like things were happening quite quickly. Like, And in a way, like, the ending, in a sense, felt it had a bit rushed to me in a sense. It felt like Garth Brown, he, la he laid out a lot of questions the readers would have. And it felt like he was not really rushing, but it just didn't feel like everything was wrapped up well and there was something introduced in here that not, didn't really feel like it was in depth to me personally i i don't know this 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 person didn't work for me like i didn't think it was a or bad book but i don't know it was just fine for me so yeah i did give it a three star <laughs> and the last book i finished in november was womb by emma donahue and we follow this boy named Jack and his ma. And Jack and ma, they lived in this room until one day Jack is able to escape from room and rescue his mother. And I would say be aware because this does involve a person being kidnapped and really like, I guess the trauma on their end from being kidnapped and like I would say isolated for seven years and it is interesting how this book is told from Jack's perspective because for Jack all he's ever known is this room is this four walls and his mom I guess in a way to protect him led him to believe that the outside world was only stuff you see on TV and he has to really learn how to integrate himself back into society and the fact that like, this is his new reality. Like, he and his ma are never going back to room and they will never live in room again. So he has to kind of get used to this new normal as well. Learn how to be really a human in the society. And I just found that quite interesting as well, seeing bits and pieces of Ma after she's she escapes, how she has to deal with the courts, as well people like suspecting stuff about her and abuser, like, as well like her own trauma. So yeah, I did enjoy it. And, well, I enjoyed it. I, I thought it was interesting. I cannot say I enjoyed it because it's not like a joyful book, but yeah. I gave it a force. Now, that is everything I was able to finish in November and what I plan to read in December so far. And everything else will be in my December wrap up. But after Room, I'm planning to go into Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. And I believe this is six interlocking lives, one and one an adventure. And a narrative that circles the globe and reaches from the 19th century to post apocalyptic future David Mitchell erases the boundaries of time, genre, language to offer an enthralling vision of humanity's will to power and where it will lead us. So yeah, I'm just very much intrigued about that. And after that I do plan to go into A Secret History of Witches by Louisa Morgan. And this is a sweeping historical saga that traces five generations of Fiercely powerful mothers and daughters, which is whose magical inheritance is both a dangerous threat and an extraordinary gift. So yeah, I'm very much intrigued about both of those books and yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> so that is everything I read in November and what I plan to read in December so far. And yeah, that's it for this video. So if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below telling me what you've been reading recently. If you want to, please subscribe to this channel, and if you want to follow me on any social media, all those links are in the down bar below. I'll see you guys next time I post a video. Bye.